on the recording at this moment. So this session will be recorded for later. And if you have any problems with the video or the audio, definitely say something in the chat and we will do what we can to assist. So with that, uh, let me turn it over to Daniel. Daniel, take, take it away. Can't wait to hear what you've got to say. Uh, okay, uh, I can't see the, the chat because I have the presentation in full screen. And I don't know how to how to say how to see the, the chat. So I'll be that's happy to not... keep an eye on the chat for you and maybe just uh, let you know when there are questions from time to time, if that's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so I start. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. It's great to see you. My name is Daniel Merino, and I am working as a learning manager in the public University of Navarra in Spain. And I'm going to show you the exciting innovations we are planning here in Spain for Sakai with some money we have got from the European Union in the plan uh, Unidigital. <clears throat> I'm sorry if my English is not very good. Uh, I don't speak English very often. Uh, Miguel is here to help me if I, I don't understand uh, something. But if you write uh, questions in the chat, I think I will understand them uh, pretty well. Uh, uh, first, uh, I speak on behalf of the SGU team. Some mates of the team are here with us supporting. And uh, we are a group of universities and companies using Sakai in Spain uh, with the uh, University of Lleida, Public University of Navarra, where, where I work, uh, Polytechnic University of Valencia, uh, University of Murcia, and uh, the International University of La Rioja and also uh, the company in Tornos de Formación in, Val in Valencia too. So uh, if you want to pay us a visit, here you have the map. Uh, this team was created because when we started with Sakai, uh, all of us uh, had the same issues, the same doubts, the same needs. So we team up and uh, we have been the last 15 years or so collaborate, collaborating ourselves and with the international community too. We try to replicate the community workflows and therefore we do a weekly meeting and talk about uh, our issues, our, our patches, our developments and so. And we tried uh, also to distribu distribute a bit of QA work. Uh, we also meet in an annual leave event, uh, uh, but uh, because of the pandemic, the last one was uh, two years ago here in Pamplona. But uh, we are planning to restart this uh, great habit and we will probably meet the next January in Valencia. So if you want to come, everybody is welcome. <coughs> About the project uh, Unidigital, uh, I don't want to go into the bureaucratic details because I don't know them too much. Just the European Union uh, launched this in initiative for funding projects in universities and improving their digital infrastructure. One of the different approaches uh, were uh, collaborative projects between several universities. And this included, uh, of course, the development of, or, or enhancement of uh, digital learning environments. And of course, Sakai was part of this. So uh, the first steps, I quickly tell you our steps. Uh, before knowing nothing about the Unidig Unidigital, the University of Lleida did a proposal in one meeting uh, for adding uh, Office 365 Teams integration. They mostly wanted to integrate uh, video conferencing capabilities, if I remember correctly. And after that, uh, SGU notices uh, about the, un uh, the Unidigital funds and all were uh, interested. So we wrote a document about uh, how we would like the Office 365 integration uh, to be. And later we not noticed that uh, we had even more money because the funds uh, covered integration and some money was uh, going to be left over. Uh, some of us uh, have uh, some futures specially decided in which uh, we could spend some extra money, uh, not from Europe, but uh, ours. So we did another document with a wish list and we tried to calculate uh, the amount of hours of each future. And we are off. Uh, 
then we were off and did it. we did several meetings. We decided uh, which developments were the more important for, for us. And then uh, Lleida, University of Lleida, uh, took the, the leadership of the project. Albert Calabasa uh, is uh, head of uh, information technology department in the University of Lleida. Uh, he wrote the tender documentation in which I wrote the technical specifications, asking everybody what they exactly wanted. And uh, the agreement was uh, signed and submitted, and it was finally approved by the ministry. So we finally have the money. Well, about the tender, uh, we are wanted that the company who wins uh, would follow the community workflows. So we spe specified in this in the document. So the developments uh, must be documented in Jira tickets. New features must be presented to the teaching and learning group so they can give, up, give their opinions and maybe ask for some changes if the budget allow. allow. Uh, the new code must be revised in GitHub according to the community rules with peer revisions. And of course, everything will be contributed to the master branch the trunk branch. Also, uh, we, des we decided that some developments could be dangerous because they could be underrated in hours of development and could not be doable. So we let the developers to decide which ones they could do and discard the others. Finally, we wanted uh, that the company who wins the tender had experience uh, working with Sakai and collaborating with the community so we uh, we get points. We awarded those things in the tender. Happily, uh, only one company has participated in the tender, and they have a huge experience uh, with Sakai. I think you all surely aware why I'm talking about. Okay, our goals. Uh, there are, uh, there are our three goals: uh, Office 365 integration. Enhanced tools uh, with more features and uh, a better product, a better platform. Uh, so let's go with the details. Okay. In Office 365, uh, we have uh, five uh, projects. You can see here the project di the diagram proposals. And uh, the projects are uh, group and users, teams, stream, OneDrive, and collaborative documents. So let's see each one. <clears throat> uh, group, uh, groups and users. Uh, in groups and users integration, the main idea is to have uh, linked objects between both platforms. So the users, groups, and workspace of Sakai will be reflected in Teams. And of course, the, transit, the transition from one to the other uh, will be transparent, transparent for the users without extra logins. Also, a flexible linking has been requested. For example, that one site could have several teams or one team linked with a Sakai group or section. And finally, uh, we want an scalable design that could allow other uh, still not known vinculations in the future. OK, teams. Uh, Teams integration is a uh, focus in the video conferencing, video conferencing tool. Uh, we want to have uh, inside, inside Sakai the crew actions for meetings. Uh, just in case somebody doesn't know, uh, crew actions are uh, create, read, update, delete. You know, the four basic actions. Also, we want uh, to have uh, access control, so people coming from Sakai only can see what they can see in Sakai, and they only can access to the meetings they have access in, in, in Sakai. And also, we want an easy way to share the meeting links inside Sakai. Uh, last one, uh, we also want to have the possibility of recording the meetings and store uh, the, these recordings in OneDrive. Okay, about the stream, uh, we can currently use stream as multimedia repository. 
we all have uh, campus licenses in the SGU team. And we also want to do that from Sakai. So, so we could manage the, the, the videos in a stream from the platform and we could delimit the access to these videos for a specific sites, groups, or users. Well, uh, the, the, the videos should be available to be used in the majority of tools. So you can embed a, one stream video in a lesson or an assignment, etc. And uh, we also want uh, that some stream design elements like tags, uh, channels, or playlists uh, are uh, also synchronized with Sakai. Uh, there are uh, other solutions of video repositories working in Sakai right now. Uh, and I think that we should inspire on them and have at least uh, the same functionality of, the, of these integrations uh, in this development. The one drive integration is uh, one of the most demanded here. Sakai already have some kind of integration, uh, but we think that it uh, lacks the main advantage that will be uh, managing, managing OneDrive files as, as if were inside resources tool. You can use resources in, in any tool, and we want the same for OneDrive. So we have planned uh, that the files will be managed uh, with SharePoint links. They could be used in, a, in any Sakai tool. And of course, uh, they will respect uh, Sakai's uh, access control. Besides, uh, OneDrive's files uh, has, uh, have some features like expiration dates and password protection that uh, we would like to use also in Sakai. And finally, in Office 365, the shared, the shared documents. Uh, uh, currently, it's possible to edit uh, Office, Office 365 documents like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint with uh, multiple users. It would be uh, awesome if this edition could start in Sakai. So several users in a site or a group could start a document, a document and could work on it at the same time, and the final document would be available inside Sakai. The features for this development would be the same than before, uh, controlling access, using links in SharePoint, in any tool, and the growth actions uh, on the documents uh, from Sakai. OK, this is about Office 365. And uh, we also have uh, remaining money for other tool enhancements. Actually, Daniel, could I, could I break in for one moment? There was a question before we move on from Office 365 from uh, Shoji about Stream. He asks, are you using Stream Classic or the new Stream? Uh, so, sorry, uh, I, I can see now the chat. If you can write the question in the chat. I, it's I it's a... in the chat. Shoji asks, uh, are you ah, using sorry, Stream yeah, Classic? Yes. Yeah. Stream Classic or the new one? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know what uh, version of Stream are, are we using right now. Uh, we are a stream. We are using Stream in, in, in the web, I, I think, mm -hmm. in the cloud, but I think the cloud uh, is, uh, is updated uh, permanently updated, but I, I'm not sure. Sorry, maybe Miguel knows. Uh, Miguel seems right to be in the writing chat. in the chat. So I, I, let, let, let's let's move on, and we can let the the question work itself out in the chat. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I move on. Uh, well, the tool enhance enhancements are here. These are the enhancements that are mandatory, uh, so the tendering company can't reject them. And uh, here we have the project di diagram. So, uh, as you can see, there are a lot. And later, uh, we, we have even more. So I, I will try to explain very quickly all, all of them. Well, uh, rubrics. Uh, we have uh, two developments in rubrics. 
the first one uh, allows uh, to create ad hoc rubrics while grading test uh, questions uh, in a test and quizzes exam. Uh, at the time of grading, you have your maybe you have your rubrics, but uh, maybe a new one comes into your mind and you would like to use it. And right now, right now, this is not possible. Uh, with this feature, you could create a new rubric and use it while uh, while grading the exam. Also, you could mo modify the grading criteria of the 16 rubrics and uh, recalcul recalculate the points for all the students. And uh, the second development uh, allows to use rubrics in the peer review of assignments. Students can't use the rubrics uh, right now when evaluating to their classmates. And uh, with this uh, development, they will be able to do it. Well, uh, assignments, uh, uh, the first change wants uh, to modify the default availability of, the, of an assignment that is site. So uh, if there are groups or sections and the, the teacher who creates uh, one assignment is included in any of them, the assignment uh, is created uh, by default only available for their groups. Of course, the teacher can change this uh, in the settings uh, if he wants. Another request uh, is uh, the ability for students to view grades of the already submitted uh, assignments in the main page of assignment tool. Uh, they currently need uh, to click on every assignment to see their grades, so we want uh, they can view all their grades in a single view. And finally, the third uh, development wants to add uh, some or organization in the assignments. Uh, if you have uh, a lot of assignments, uh, it's, right now it's hard to manage them. So teachers could add uh, tags to the assignments uh, that allow to find them later and also folders to store assignments uh, as they wish, tags and folders. Okay. Okay, message. Uh, in message, uh, we have three uh, requests. The first one is about uh, including an option in every message. So if you click on that uh, option, the, the message text is sent to a forum topic called uh, FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. So you are the teacher and you explain to some students something in a message. Yeah, maybe you think uh, this could be a good uh, question for the for the TAC. Okay, then you click the option, the new option, and the test is sent uh, to the to the forum. Later, you can change it uh, and maybe add more information or a better format, but the, you have it in, in the forum. Another one, uh, the tag support and search uh, is the same that in, uh, in assignments before. Users could add, add uh, tags to their message and later, later they could search by tag and could see the tag uh, messages. Uh, helpful for finding information uh, within this uh, development. Finally, uh, the third and last development for message is about adding a uh, acknowledgement of a receipt in message. Excuse my pronunciation. So you send a message and if the recipient reads it, uh, you are notified. So the students couldn't say they didn't read. And they had no excuse for not doing, doing something. Okay, uh, Gradebook uh, has only one development, but I think it, this is one of the most complex uh, we have. If I understand well, uh, this uh, will allow to each teacher in a group to create their, their own uh, grading schema that will be applied only to the students in his group. This is not possible right now. Uh, Gradebook only has a grading schema and uh, several teachers must uh, agree in which one they are going to use. After this feature, uh, each teacher can grade to their students according to their own criteria. 
Okay, and lessons. Uh, in lessons, we want to add uh, a new prerequisite. As you know, uh, some contents are not uh, sold uh, until some prerequisite uh, has been accomplished. I think that uh, currently they are, they are all about having seen something. If you have seen this content, you can continue. Uh, with this uh, feature, you can show the next uh, content only if a grade is uh, bigger, equal, or smaller than some number. Uh, the grades that could be checked uh, will be the ones in test and quizzes, uh, assignments, or in a lesson question. Well, uh, test and quizzes. We start with test and, test and quizzes. Uh, it's uh, by far the tool with more changes. Uh, I have uh, grouped them in subcategories and uh, this, this subcategory is uh, reporting. Uh, we have a request for three types of reports. Uh, I think that uh, they could overlap in some things. I, am, I don't really have very clear the scope of, uh, of every report, but I think that when we create the Jira tickets, uh, everything will be explained uh, better there. We have a uh, First, uh, we have a new report in which we want to see the answers of each student, if the answers are, are correct or not, and uh, one summary of, uh, with the number of correct answers, incorrect answers, and not uh, answered questions. This report uh, will be in PDF and will be available for one single student or for the full class. The second report is about uh, one test. It must show information about all the questions, the number of times that each question has, has been answered, the number of times that each answer has been selected, and uh, some calculations about the difficulty degree and the discrimination degree. Uh, this report could be generated in the question section and also in the item analysis section. And finally, the third report, uh, report is about uh, exam submissions. Uh, for one exam and one student, uh, it will generate a PDF, a PDF with, the, with the exam at, uh, and the student's answers. This can be currently done in a report that you can see with the browser in, in test and quizzes. But this feature uh, tries to display it in a more friendly format and uh, probably with uh, some extra information. Okay. Well, uh, the calculated questions are another feature with some changes, I think uh, quite deep. Uh, we want to have uh, an option to previsualize the calculated questions in the question pools. I don't know the details, but I understand that now you can see the questions properly in the pools, and I, I guess that this, this will add some kind of previsualization with values in the variables and the result of the calculations. Another development will include global vari variables in calculated questions, so you can configure, configure one vari variable with some calculation in one test, and this variable is uh, available in every calculated question you want to use, so you don't have to repeat the calculation uh, in each question. Finally, the, the feedback and the internet internationalization. Uh, the feedback is not uh, good right now for these questions because one student cannot see the values that he submitted in the exam. He can see some random values, uh, but it's not clear for students if uh, he answered uh, well or bad the question. The idea here is allowing to every student to see exactly the values that were uh, generated for him in his uh, test and uh, the answer he submitted. 
and uh, also fixing some international internationalization issues that are uh, documented in these questions. Uh, for example, uh, allowing commas as decimal separator or using the any key for names uh, of variables. Okay, <coughs> the pools. Uh, the pools have uh, five uh, features. The first one is a better search uh, functionality in, in them. I think this is just a test field when you can search some test and see the pools that match with the, the text. Another, another one is about folders. Uh, there would be great uh, organi organizing the be great organizing the pools in folders so you can have them uh, grouped uh, according to some criteria. And this same development uh, plans to add some uh, statistics of usage so, so you can see the pools. Uh, you have used more uh, and less. Tag search, uh, as in the other tools uh, seen before, uh, tagging the questions uh, can allow to other, a better organization of them and a better search later of a question uh, we want to find. Random questions from several pools. Uh, it's, I think it's quite explanatory. You now you can get a number of random questions from one single pool. And with this enhancement, you will be able to do the same with several pools. And finally, uh, the EMS QTE export and import. Uh, right, right now, uh, you can export a pool, but it's quite annoying because you need to create an exam with the pool's questions and export the exam. Uh, exporting and importing a pool is a very useful feature, and it, uh, we think it, it will, uh, will not be too hard to implement. Well, we see the test. Uh, the first one is another, I think, complex development uh, that can uh, could be very useful in some cases. Uh, this feature uh, will add a time monitorization in the test, so you can know for each submission uh, how much time every student uh, has dedicated to each question. Also related with time, uh, another feature will allow to configure, configure a question or a page uh, with a maximum time, so students uh, must answer before the time is out. After that, uh, after the time is out, uh, the exam forces to continue to continue, continue sorry, to the next question uh, or page. And uh, finally, the third feature uh, adds, another, adds, adds another feedback option, so students could see uh, how many correct answers they have submitted, but they won't know uh, which ones were correct and which, which uh, others were not. Okay. Well, uh, here we have uh, more features, uh, the last of the mandatory. Uh, okay. uh, for the navigation through the answer of exams, uh, some enhancement uh, has been requ requested. Uh, when browsing in the student's answers, uh, it's not uh, possible right now to go from one student to the next one, or the previous one, like, for example, you can do in assignments. This uh, development will add uh, that kind of navigation in students' answers. Also, a recurrent request from time to time is the kiosk mode in test and quizzes. Uh, we all want to have kiosk mode, so we have the, decided that in integrating some open source tool for it will be necessary. And the chosen open source tool is a safe exam browser. And uh, this uh, feature will support using it in, in test and quizzes. <coughs> Markup test uh, with uh, HTML tags. This is uh, quite explanatory, too. Now, uh, right now, you can do an exam with uh, the included markup test, but the graphical design is non existent. 
So if you can use some HTML tags uh, in, in the markup test, the visual aspect, aspect uh, could improve uh, a lot. Adding, for example, bold text, underlines, colors, embedded image, etc. Okay. Uh, disabled questions. This is uh, also very useful. Sometimes the teachers see that uh, they have uh, done a, they have included a wrong question in the in the test after the submissions, and uh, they want to remove it. Uh, this is not possible. And it has no it has sense not removing it. But then they want to disable that question and recalculate the grades, and we currently tell them to do that in Excel or similar. So this feature allows uh, to disable a question, so students can see it disabled in the in the test. Uh, but the grades uh, doesn't have it into account. Finally, enhanced event log interface. Uh, we want to add uh, an uh, improved interface to the event log. Uh, this log is very useful for investigating issues. So we want to add uh, column order, uh, some filter and search options, and the possibility of exporting the, the event log. Well, uh, I think I, I, I have uh, not very much time. The optional developments, uh, as I have said before, uh, we added a bunch of features estimated in hours, and each tendering company had to choose uh, which one uh, were feasible, fit into a number of hours. Uh, this, uh, this one is the selection of the winner company. The red features were discarded, and uh, they decided that they, they were very difficult to implement with the assigned towers. So we are going to see the accepted developments. Okay. Here we have the, the break timing. There are 10 uh, developments. And here we go. <clears throat> the first change is about creating an, uh, announcements that are sent only for uh, roles. Uh, a new option uh, added to existing options is quite explanatory. You select the role, and this announcement is only for uh, visible for that role. Another development is about the ability to highlight the announcements. So we can mark uh, one announcement, and it's displayed uh, with some icon or some colors that reinforce the attention. Uh, other change, we want to add uh, to site stats a new e event that uh, records when some user uh, downloads a tip, from, a tip file from resources. Uh, this action is not currently recorded, and some teachers think it's important to, to know it. The fourth development is about adding group support to the wiki tool. Uh, we think that wiki is a tool that is not used uh, very much and it's always you know, on the cutting edge of replacement but uh, year after year uh, it's still there and it doesn't have uh, group support so we want to have it another change we're planning to add a schedule of time in the groups so they can be created that uh, are disabled before uh, one specific date Finally, uh, a big change with a lot of work, the LTE, LTA integration of uh, H5P platform. H5P is a platform uh, of uh, interactive contents created in HTML5. This platform is open source and it uh, uses a lot in Moodle. And this integration will allow to create uh, and use their components in Sakai uh, as embedded learning interactive contents. Okay, we are in the last screen. Uh, um, about roster, uh, you can currently export all the users to an Excel file. We are going to add another option for exporting on uh, one or more groups and split the groups in the Excel columns. Okay. And the cards game. Uh, this is a new feature that will help the teachers to learn the name of students. If the roster tool contains the photos of the students, 
this game presents all their photos and when clicking on one photo the card turns around and you see the student's name and i finish uh, the last one is uh, just uh, add uh, in some place it's not uh, still decided uh, in some place of the portal the the current role you have in this moment and in this site there are users that are uh, instructors in one side maintains in another teaching assistants so you can see what you are in the site what you are right now uh, in some place in the in the portal okay so if you have questions uh, to watch the chat or if you want to tell uh, Miguel can help with the uh, translations there actually aren't any questions in the chat at this point other than one about whether the slides can be posted so Daniel with your permission oh. I can post the slides uh, in on the conference site okay see why well, well, okay Any other questions? That, that, that was a lot, and a, a lot for us to take in. I'm sure a lot of us will want to look at the slides and think about them some more. So we have about four minutes before this session is due to end at 10 minutes before the top of the hour. So this is your chance to ask any questions that you might have. I see a bunch of people are typing in the chat. <laughs> Too much content. Uh, I agree. So Wilma asked what the timeline is for these improvements. Ah, OK, timeline. Uh, well, uh, there are three timelines, but uh, you want to see the uh, Office 365. I, I think the, uh, most of the developments are planned to be finished by September, I think. So the company have uh, three more months to fix things and do some maintainment, maintenance. Office 365 uh, in August. Uh, the other, the tool enhancements, uh, I think also in July, uh, or I, I, I have said. Yes, September. The optional developments are the last ones, and they are in September. But uh, the, the, the tender uh, specified that the, all the projects must be finished by December. So in 2024, uh, all the work should have been done. So there's there's another question from uh, from Jack, which and he asks: Once the project is complete, are there additions to the timeline for integration and acceptance? Uh, I'm looking for the message in the chat, Jack Sharon, I think. That's the one. Ah, uh, oh, once this project is complete, is there an addition to the timeline for integration and acceptance? Uh, I think integration and acceptance are, uh, is included in the in the project, so uh, it should have finished uh, by December, by the January to 2024. And there's a question from Kurt who asks, "Will you come back next year and show us what it looks like?" <laughs> it will be a pleasure. All right, we have one minute remaining in this session. So if uh, there's time for one last brief question, if there is one out there. Uh, I would like to say one final thing. Uh, uh, okay, we just uh, have uh, some money. So have got money, we are going to work hard with us because we cannot waste this opportunity. Uh, and we all, uh, we think that we need the help of the community to, to do that. So. We need your feedback and your expertise and 
we are must uh, collaborate in this project. So if you have any comment or question or suggestion, just uh, drop me a line. Um, if we make a good job, maybe they will give us more money. All right, it is 11.50 a.m. Eastern, 10 minutes before the top of the hour, wherever you are. So this is this marks the end of this session. So I'm gonna turn off the recording and I just